Hi, this is Demetria Clark with Homes by Demetria. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what can you actually afford when it comes to buying a house? So they make all these really easy calculators online like how much would your monthly payment be? And you're like, oh, well, I pay similarly to that for rent or whatever else. Um, but the reality is, is that what you can actually afford and what you actually pay can often be two different numbers. And what you pay for rent isn't interchangeable necessarily with what your future mortgage will look like. So before we get into any like weird number crunching stuff, because in reality, that's probably a whole other episode. Here are some tips that I want you to use and to think about when it comes to what can you actually afford. So first of all, you need to get honest. What are you actually paying for housing now? Are you paying rent, utilities, how much it costs for a parking space, or are you paying one fee and everything's included? Are you paying additional money to be in a certain neighborhood? Um, are you paying for, you know, services and amenities that you're going to have to go and pay for them separately if you purchased a home? So if you rent from a complex that has a pool and a weight room and you use them all the time, are you going to have to then pay for a gym membership to keep those kinds of habits up. That's all really part of your housing costs. What are you getting for your money? And you know I'm a huge fan of home ownership. Like home ownership is something I think is really super important, but when it comes to those numbers, you need to make sure you're really honest with yourself. Then you need to look at how much are additional things gonna cost. Like if I live in New England, and I don't have a snow plow on the front of my truck or my car, do I have a snow blower? Or am I gonna have to pay someone to plow my driveway if it's a long driveway? Is it something that I can regularly shovel? Can I shovel in the morning and still get to work on time? Those are things in cost to homeownership potentially. Are you going to have to, you know, if you work 60, 70 hours a week and you never get home before sunset, are you going to have to pay someone to take care of your lawn? Are you going to have to pay for something like that? Or can you do it yourself? Do you need a riding lawnmower if you're in a time crunch? Or, you know, these are things that you have to really think about. What do you actually get for your money? And what are your actual expenditures? A lot of people aren't really honest with themselves when it comes to money. Uh, people either tend to think they're much poorer than they are or their money will go much further than it will. Another thing that you need to consider is utilities. So what are the actual cost of utilities for houses the size of the house that you think that you need? And you can find this information online. You can find out, um, you can look up, you know, what's the average monthly cost for gas for this amount size house or electric bill. I mean, you can find some averages, but look, if you both work from home and you have servers and computers or multiple TVs, lots and lots of devices, your electric bill is going to be different than someone else's. I, my electric bill, for instance, is like, you know, I have farm buildings and I have, you know, greenhouse lights and I have, you know, uh, the cost of maintaining two septics and I, you know, they, uh, my costs are going to be much different than someone else who just buys a house that's the same size as my house. So you have to really think about those things. If you're looking at something that has a well, do you have the ability to maintain that well? Same with a septic. You know, there's lots of different costs that are associated with home ownership. Then do you have any savings? Do you actually have any money saved? Because when you buy a home, you have to maintain and fix that home. You can do it, you know, you know, we when we first bought our home, it was like we needed $3,000 to reshingle the roof and to fix the two rails on the steps. And 
we had a tax refund that was coming that would allow us to do that, but we didn't really have any savings. So things didn't get painted. Things didn't necessarily always, you know, get updated or maintained as fast as they should. And we know now, like, that was hard. That was a mistake. We probably should have made savings a priority and our lives would have been a lot less stressful. We limped along a furnace for about two years longer than we should have because the cost to replace it was just so astronomical for us at the time. So having having those kind of things in mind, like a contingency plan, a savings plan, putting a little bit of money away, you know, if you're not doing that now as a renter, you're not going to you're not going to be able to do that transition easily to a homeowner and homeowners should have some kind of buffer. I'm not saying you need lots and lots of money, but what are you going to do if your refrigerator dies? It's much better to be your own bank than to put it on a credit card or a store credit card. So think about things like that. We recently just had a hailstorm in Virginia that was so bad. I need a new roof and two of our cars were damaged. And our house is about, our roof is like 4,600 square feet with, you know, the little porch roofs and stuff. And I wanted to upgrade to metal so I don't have to, you know, fix my roof again the next time there's a hailstorm. And, you know, that having a contingency plan helps with that. It makes that whole process a little bit less stressful. You work with the insurance company, you get what you can, and then you have your savings. So trying to do that for yourself, giving yourself that freedom is wonderful. And doing that before you even buy a house, having a little bit put aside. If you can't trust yourself with the money, you can put it in a savings account you know, that you never look at, that earns a, a nice interest rate. I think they're about 4% right now. And just, you know, have it in there and have a conversation. If you have a partner, like we're not removing any money from this unless we both agree, because making that savings a priority is really important. I'll give you this little tip though. Once you start savings and you start having a savings, it almost becomes like, a thing where you want to have more. You're like, okay, this is, it becomes more important to you. Also, when it comes to buying a home, you have to pay for and maintain all of your appliances and all of the services. So if you have a water softener or a whole house water filter, all of those things are really wonderful when you buy a house, but what if something happens? And often inevitably something happens you know, we had to have our well looked at within a few months of moving into our house because we were worried that, you know, there was a problem with the well and we got it all sorted and it was a filter issue, but we still had to have someone come out. We had to some, have someone help us like go through the whole process with us. And that was a few hundred dollars that we weren't expecting to pay for. So having those kinds of things in mind are really helpful when you're going into the what can I afford process. And then do you have a down payment? Are you working with a loan program that doesn't require a big down payment? If so, or you're thinking of looking into those, look at trying to put some money aside for the contingencies, the issues that could potentially come up once you purchase a home. Homeownership is amazing. There's so much freedom involved in it. You really get to set down roots and stay in a space for a while, but everything is really your headache. It's not your landlord's headache anymore. So really getting yourself pivoted and primed for home ownership and really being honest with yourself about what you can afford is going to really help you with the loan process. It's going to help you understand and be really keyed in to your money. And really don't over borrow. It's really tempting when the market is tight to over borrow or to purchase a home that is close to a, a payment you're not comfortable with or one you're clearly not comfortable with. So I'm comfortable with a certain amount and my husband's comfortable with another certain amount. I'm the higher, he's the way lower. I mean, the poor guy still thinks he should be able to get his blue jeans for his Carhartt jeans for $25. That that's not happening anymore. That ship has sailed, homie, in 1994. But the reality is is that you have to also if you have a partner be on the same page about budget and what you can't afford. 
because you can make a house nicer if you can afford it. If you can't afford it and your struggle is just basic maintenance and your mortgage payment, you are never going to be able to turn the house into your home and a place you feel safe and secure in or a place that you could potentially pay off earlier by making a few extra mortgage payments a year or making a mortgage payment every two weeks or a half mortgage payment every two weeks. I mean, the reality is, is there's lots of things you can do to make your home yours faster, but it's much harder if the home is at the very top of your limit, like to the point where you're like, I'm not really comfortable with this. Another thing that you need to consider when you start looking at your numbers is how much are your taxes? So we were looking at a house and it was beautiful. It had land. I mean, it was it was literally in magazines, right? And it was gorgeous. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want this house. This is my house. Oh my gosh, I love it. I want to go see it. The location wasn't right, right? Um, it was at the very top of my budget. So my husband was like, ah! And then the taxes. So the taxes were $12,000 a year. And it was a very expensive house. And so $12,000 a year, if you're living in New Hampshire or something like that, and you have an acre or two, you're probably like, $12,000 a year, that's nothing for taxes. But the area we're looking, that was a lot for taxes. There was a lot of buildings to maintain. Um, it was really a beautiful property, but you, would ha you had to have some money to keep it beautiful, right? It was bigger than, uh, the house was bigger than I wanted in some ways and stuff like that. But I was like, oh, I'll never have to do anything to it. It's perfect. Every room I felt was like perfect. But of course, once you move in, nothing's perfect, right? And at one point, my husband and I had this really honest conversation about money. He had recently decided to retire. And he said, look, if something happens to you and you're not working, I can't afford this house without you. And I was like, bingo, bongo, whoa. That's like, that like completely changed my outlook. And that house became very unattractive to me. He's like, even if the mortgage was paid off, like that's a lot of money to pay in taxes. That's a lot of property to maintain. I wouldn't be able to necessarily do it without you. And him saying that really like changed our money conversation. But we had to be really honest with each other. And, and of course I could tell he was like, oh my gosh, she loves this. It's breaking her heart. But the second he said that, my heart wasn't broken anymore. My, my realistic brain said oh my gosh good point let's not get a property where he's gonna have to minimum twenty five hundred dollars three thousand dollars a month just for property tax utilities pool maintenance i mean it just would have been like that's we're not even talking um you know food and cars and any of that homeowners insurance like none of those other things were there and then suddenly this became like and like a you know five six thousand I don't remember it was like six or seven thousand dollar mortgage a month on top of it right like those are not things that you want to burden your partner with because something happened to you you want to have a house that you can afford and where we don't have little children anymore home and our life insurance needs are different and stuff like that so. What I'm saying is that like, have these honest conversations and talk about things that make you nervous in reference to the home buying process and realize that when someone in your relationship and in your life is voicing a concern about price or something like that, that it, they're not telling you no. They're talking to you and we're communicating and we're making the situation better. So really think about what you can afford and think about what's important to you when you purchase a home and what you're exactly looking for and what your real budget is. Thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful and have a great day.